good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen from whatever part of the world you're watching from. I bring you greetings from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords whom you represent here on earth. I'm so excited to share with you about um, God's wonderful works and all that um, God is going to share, uh, bring to you today through me. And um, we're going to have an amazing time. Welcome to your daily dose of Daily Boost. It's another exciting time in God's presence. And of course, I'm covering up for my dad, Apostle Dr. Charles Ndifon. And it's a great privilege to just stand here and on this platform and just share the word to people around the world. So I am really excited. But real quick, I just want to share with you a few announcements. Um, we have the School of the Spirit that is coming up. And it's right there on your screen. It's on from October 21st to October 24th and the team is one spirit you do not want to Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Um, this thing Hello, is that same spirit? How does this same spirit that was in Christ Jesus operate, and how can you operate like Christ? Of course, you know, Power School is coming up in January. It's always the third, um, the third week of January, so you do not want to miss out. Look out for the announcements, and um, let's get right on the word. 
And you know, I got a song that is bubbling in my spirit, and it's a song I'd always learned from my children church and back in the years, and it says, I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. And that is the message for you today. Today, I am talking about joy. If there's something I have learned in, in, in my adulthood is just, and from Apostle Dr. Charles is, do not teach something you do not live. And so today, I'm talking about joy because I live out the life of joy every day. And I saw different definitions of joy in the, in the, in the dictionary and on Google talking about it's a, great feeling of, uh, it's a great feeling of pleasure and satisfaction and all of that. But I come to realize that joy is an attitude of the heart. The same way thanksgiving is an attitude of the heart, so is joy. Joy is a posture of the heart. How do you keep your heart? And that is what we're going to be talking about. Joy, joy, joy. And you know, I gave an acronym for joy today, and I said joy is Jesus on you. That is the acronym I gave to it, Jesus on you. How do you manifest this Jesus on you? How do you manifest this Jesus on your inside? That is what we're going to be talking about today. I'll tell you a quick story. So um, a couple of months ago, about a year or two ago, a friend called me and he was telling me, um, Divine, I have this friend who is really sad. He's going through a lot of things. And um, so this friend of mine calls me a bundle of joy. He always calls me at... He just makes me laugh. He always says, you are a bundle of joy. I don't know how you do it, but you got so much joy to share. And so he told me about this friend who was sad and feeling down and how he wanted me to encourage this friend and just call, call this friend and talk to this friend. And I'm like, sure, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And then I called this. Uh, he gave me the friend's number. I spoke with a friend and um, had a video called Long Conversation with This Friend. Tell you what. By the end of the conversation, I was so drained. <laughs> and that wasn't just a one-time incident. So I realized that this person, this new friend, would call me every day, literally every day, and just want to, just looking for someone who would um, soothe his sadness and make him feel good, make him laugh and everything and all of that. And then I was doing that. But then I realized I was getting drained at some point and just, like, of course I was helping, but at the same time, it's one thing to help someone. It's another thing for the person to accept the help and want to be better. And after that incident, well, what happened was I, one day, I, I just told myself, you know what, I cannot do this. And then I told this friend, one of these days we're talking on the phone, this new friend, I'm like, see, you're a very great person. You're an amazing person. The truth is, I cannot make you happy. You have to make yourself happy. And again, the kind of conversations we have do not even excite me. The kind of conversations we have, they take me down a path I have left, and I don't want to have those kind of conversations. So, and then I told this person, he was so sad. He was so heartbroken. He was like, oh, I can't believe you're telling me all of this. Well... My joy is important to me. My happiness, I cannot make anyone happy. Happiness is a choice. Of course, we're going to differentiate between happiness and joy. But on the surface level, and I would always say this to my friends, I'm like, whenever you come around me, you bring your happiness. I have mine, <laughs> and we would add both happinesses together, and I would be happy. But you come around me expecting me to make you happy, I'm sorry. I cannot make you happy. There's just so much I can give to you. It all depends on you. And that is why I said from the beginning, joy is an attitude of the heart. Now, happiness, on the other hand, is just a, a great feeling. It's just um, oh, a great feeling that is based on circumstance. And our anchor scripture today is Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. And it's just the B part, which talks about the joy of the Lord is your strength. That is our anchor scripture for today. So, of course, there are a lot of scriptures today. And hopefully, I'm able to get through everything that the Holy Spirit has given me today. If not, it's going to be a two-time series. We're going to have a second part. But I need us to understand joy is very important the scripture talks about the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
And of course, we, we, we quote the scripture all the time and people do not have a, an understanding on what this scripture really is. But there's a different translation I looked at and then I liked this other translation and I think it's from um, the, the Good News translation which says, the joy that the Lord gives you will make you strong. And I thought that is really powerful. The joy that the Lord gives you will make you strong. You know what I realized? That joy is a gift. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. It's a gift from the Lord. And so is, of course, we call them the fruit of the Spirit. We have love, joy, and all of those fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit. How can people see the Jesus on your inside, which is the, the acronym for, for joy, Jesus on, on you? So how can the world see the Jesus that you have on your inside? They see that Jesus through the fruit that you display, the joy, the love, the, the patience you have for people. That is how people see the Jesus on your inside. But like the scripture talks about stirring up the gift. If you do not stir up the gift, people will not see that. So, of course, everyone sees divine. Oh, I'm very, for those who know me, I am generally happy. I'm always laughing. I mean, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I have had, um, I have lost a loved one. I have lost an older sister. I have lost an uncle. For the most part of the deaths I have heard, the, my first reaction is always laughter. And, you know, I used to think I was, I was crazy. I'm, I'm weird. Why am I laughing? This is a tragic experience. I should not be laughing. But I realized that the joy that God has given to me and that joy you have also, it's not a feeling of happiness that is based on circumstances. It is beyond that. It is beyond that. And the scripture even talks about um, Jesus in, in um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, or verse 2 or verse 3, who, that talks about looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Question is, what was that joy that was set before Jesus Christ that made him go through that horrible death? You. You are the joy of the Lord. You are that joy that Jesus saw. So when he was right down there and he was going through the pain and all the weep, and when he just, he was, tempt, he was really, really tempted to want to say, you know what, Lord, I'm, God, I'm not, Father, I'm not doing this anymore. Just send the legions of angels to come take me up. Those people are not worth it. He didn't do that. He thought we were so worthy of it. So for that joy, for 2021, that he, would, he, he saw me standing here sharing this, he endured the cross. For that joy that was before him, he endured the cross. And you are the joy of the Lord. And remember, I just said, joy is a gift. And if joy is a gift, how much more you who have the giver of the gift on the inside of you. Now, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, shall flow rivers of living water. And sometimes that rivers of living water, it's not just, it's not just a literal water, rivers of living water. When you talk about joy, we're talking about life. Now, I have never seen a funeral that is always joyful. There are always moments of sadness. Maybe people just... Um, stay happy as a coping make form of coping mechanism but joy you cannot have joy and be and be sad for long it just doesn't work i really need to get to my point but i am really just enjoying enjoying just just the thought of talking about joy something that i get to live every day it's such a blessing and i remember back in college and i believe i shared this before how i um there was a student uh, of a uh, college mate of mine who saw me for the very first time and he thought I was weird. He couldn't understand how I was so happy, how I am always happy. I do get sad. It's, it's all part of life. These are emotions that we all go through. Jesus also was sad too. The Bible talked about how he, 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 was, he was sad when he, he had to like go to the cross. And of course, we can see that from when he was praying, how he was praying fervently that even the sweat looked like blood, uh, were like drops of blood while he was praying. Father, let this cup pass over me. However, not my will, but yours be done. So 
We all get through uh, moments and times of sadness, but that doesn't mean that the joy of the Lord is not in us. And we should allow the joy to take prevalence over whatever circumstances that we face. And so some of the points I, I had to write down, or before we get to the point, back to the story. So this uh, college mate of mine always thought that I was very happy and he thought I had maybe like bipolar or one of those, I don't know, mental illnesses. <laughs> of course, he didn't understand that I was divine. So and we were talking one, two years later, we were talking and he was saying, you know, divine, at first I used to think you were a weirdo, like I didn't understand how you were always happy. Why are you always happy? And I just don't get it. And I thought you were weird, but I realized that over time, it was very consistent. You were always happy. And so I realized this wasn't just a regular happiness. This is more than just someone being happy over a circumstance. And then I told him, why wouldn't I be happy? Of course, I know who my dad is. Remember, we've talked about who's your daddy. Of course, I know who my daddy is. And I know who I am. And I know what I have. And I know who lives in me. And when I have this knowledge, really nothing around me should even get me down for long. Not that it wouldn't happen, but it shouldn't keep me down there for long. And I just can't help it. It's the joy of the Lord. Of course, people call me a bundle of joy. People call me this, the joyful, the happy, happy, per, happy feet, a whole lot of names. But hey, in a nutshell, all of this is just the joy of the Lord that is in me. It's different from just being happy. Happiness is circumstantial. Oh, you won the lottery, you are happy. Doesn't mean in five minutes later you're not gonna get sad. Or oh, you you you're you just meet um a partner and then you you have all the butterflies, you're happy. Those are temporary. Happiness is temporary, but joy again is the attitude and posture of the heart that whatever happens, nothing can take away that peace and that exuberance and that um liveliness that is in you. Now, what does joy do? Joy gets you past your trials. And the anchor scripture is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, which I said, which I just quoted. In the midst of Jesus' pain and suffering, he saw me, his joy. He saw me that I was going to crush the devil's head. Of course, we are more than conqueror. He, he did win the he had the victory and gave us a trophy, and we were just running around with the trophy. For the joy that we were going to crush the enemy, we were going to um, possess the land, we were going to have dominion over the earth like it was from the beginning, like how Daddy God had always wanted it. He endured the cross. So joy gets you past your actual pain. And this is not just a, this is not just, um, a fairy tale. It's actually real. I have been through, um, of course, we've all gone through challenges in life. And you know, sometimes back in college, of course, there were times when some classes were very annoying and you're like, my goodness, I don't even know if I can deal with it. But for the joy that was said before me, which was getting the degree, I endured that class. And there were times I was very tired and everything. But again, for the joy that was said before me, I endured the course. And think about, um, um, a pregnant woman, the Bible talks about how a woman who's in travail, like when she's in, in labor and everything, all the pain is just so hurtful and everything. But for the joy that I am going to be able to carry my children, those pains don't matter once the child is born. And that is what joy does. It gets you past your physical pain. Now, joy strengthens your bone. That's my number two point. Joy strengthens your bone. I have this idea. Your bones, your bones, physical bones, respond to the rhythm of your heart. Your bones respond to the rhythm of your heart. Can we look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 8? I think that is a very uh, wonderful scripture, and I think that's a scripture that talks about um, uh, a merry heart, and um, it's like healing to the bones or something like that. Uh, the Bible says, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Now, the scripture uh, before it, um, of course, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, is one of my favorite scriptures. It's about trusting in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding. 
Verse 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he should direct your path. And verse 7 talks about, um, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. If you have the fear of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your portion. So when you, you're not wise in your own eyes, and when you fear the Lord, of course, like what the scripture is saying, then verse 8, which we're talking about, was saying, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Because you fear the Lord. And of course, when we talk about fear of the Lord, we're not talking about uh, being um, afraid, being timid. Of course, God is our daddy. How can, we be, how can we be afraid of our daddy? If we're afraid of our daddy, then we're no longer hares or joint hares like he called us. We're slaves. But when, when the Bible talks about um, the fear of the Lord. It talks about a deep reverence. You acknowledge God, you honor him, you give a deep reverence like daddy. And depending on, I'm speaking for myself now, depending on what I want, depending on how I am feeling, determines how I approach God. So sometimes I would go to God as daddy, and sometimes I go to him as, um, um, okay, Holy Spirit, I just want to talk with you. Like, what do you think about this? Sometimes I go to him as a teacher. Sometimes I go to him as a father. Like, oh, I need a hug. Sometimes I go to him as, as a, a mentee who wants to learn. But, and we're going to talk about that. You know, I realize that a lot of people or some people and sometimes even ministers go to God like, their assistant. Sometimes people, I feel like people go to God like God is their assistant and like, you know, God, so yeah, like this, this is, I think the best approach to go to God is go as a child. For when you are approaching God, you put your prayer degree, your, your prayer degrees at the door and you go because you're going to your father. You are our child and not go as, um, someone who has acquired everything. And I think it's part of the reason why the Bible was talking about the rich man who thought he had acquired everything. And the scripture talks about, this day will I take your soul because you feel like, oh, you got everything, you don't need God. No, we go to, we, the best way to approach God is go as a child. But yeah, joy strengthens your physical bones. And I believe that um, uh, medical science will, uh, has talked about this, how... Um, People are able to recover fast when they are surrounded by family and they're surrounded by laughter, they're surrounded by happiness. Because of course, once you are, once you are not happy, once you are issues of the heart, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And I was talking about your bones, your body responds to the rhythm of your heart. So if your heart is, if you're having like emotional challenges, your heart is not right, that would affect even your physical body. Next thing you know, your body's aching. Sometimes you don't even need the physical healing. You just need to laugh. You just need to stir up the joy of the Lord that is within you. That way you get healing faster. And um, um, number three, my third point say, uh, is joy is the vehicle to working, living faith. Joy is vehicle to a working, living faith. The Bible talks about, um, in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, it says, with joy shall you draw out of the well of salvation. So in order to give others to drink, you cannot, you cannot draw from a dry place. Again, therefore with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation, out of the wells of salvation. How do you, how do you, preach the message of salvation to people with a sad face. You go to people and your countenance is all sad and all mean and all unapproachable. Who wants to hear that? People don't want a sad Jesus. They want a living Jesus. And of course, you guys know, Jesus never hung around a sad you see, like my dad, Apostle Charles, will always say, the sad you see. No, Jesus never hung around the sad people because they were boring. No, don't. And personally, when I find myself around people and I observe the energy and the sad people who choose, people who choose to remain sad, people who don't want to be happy, just, they just choose to remain sad, I walk away because you know why? The gift of the joy of the Lord that is in me, I protect it. I don't allow anything to come between my freedom and my happiness. 
whatever comes between my freedom and my joy is an enemy, so I would walk away from circumstances, from situations that come against my freedom and my happiness. Of course, Jesus would do the same thing. You think those people were the sinners, those people were the, um, the tax collectors, but they knew how to throw good parties like, like dad would always preach. The, they knew how to throw good parties, and Jesus hung around them. He didn't, of course, like people would always say, oh, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. Of course, these are things that we challenge. Having friends and uh, friends who are not so, um, who do not know God very well doesn't mean you're going to not know God again. doesn't mean you're going to be taken out. The, 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 the question is, who is influencing who? That is the most important thing. And so, like Jesus, he would hang around the people who knew how to throw parties. Jesus Christ was not a Sadducee. He did not like sadness. And that is why even with death, of course, when Lazarus died, he expressed emotion like humans would. But he knew what he was going to do. Of course, he raised Lazarus up from the dead. Even his own death, like dad would say, he, was, he, couldn't, even, he couldn't even stay. After three days, he was like, I'm done. I, I, can't, I can't deal with it. I love it when dad just, just, just talks about, um, just a little digression. I love it when dad, Apostle Charles, just talks about Jesus and how he just relates with Jesus. Can I tell you what? The Jesus on Apostle Charles I saw, I loved that Jesus. And I followed. And I would tell him sometimes and we would just laugh about it. I'm like, see, you see the Jesus I saw in you? I love the Jesus. And I would tell my friends, I love the Jesus I saw in this man, and that was why I followed. Because I have seen the Jesus in other people, in other past, and it's really sad. It's really all about persecution and suffering and how you cannot be good in life. Like, I don't, I don't understand it because the Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. We are definitely looking at that scripture because... I don't want it to seem like I'm just talking. The Bible says, I think it's somewhere in Psalms chapter, I know it's a verse 18. I'm not very sure. Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pl pleasures forevermore. This was um, uh, the psalmist talking about it. That will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Let's hold, on, let's hold on to that thought for a second. The scripture says, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. That's one criteria of knowing that the presence of God is there. Another criteria based on this scripture is, in his presence is fullness of joy. So, if people are gathered in the name of the Lord, quote upon quote, and there is no joy there, I'm sorry. The presence of the Lord is not there because the scripture says in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pledged for heaven. This is not just talking about heaven, his throne. His presence, the Bible says he will be with us always, always, even until the ends of the earth. So even right here, right now, we are carriers of the presence of the Lord. And so wherever we, the representatives of Christ, find ourselves, there has to be joy in that place. We have to shift the atmosphere and change the atmosphere. So if you, as a representative of Christ, you go to a place and people are already sad, people were happy, like they were okay before you came, and then you go there and people are already sad and faces are turning because you are there, one of two things, it's either, well, they're, it's either, well, they're, they have evil spirits in them or the problem is actually you. In fact, I, ladder is the, is the I, I would choose a ladder because even when Jesus was in places where there were demon-possessed people, they could not live in those, they could not dwell there. They had to scream. They could not contain themselves that they had to scream. Have you come to torment us before our time? We know who you are. And of course, Jesus would, would silence them because wherever the presence of the Lord is, of course, there is liberty, there is power, and there is fullness of joy. 
wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is always fullness of joy. You, there are certain things that you would have to see. There is freedom. There is no bondage. Jesus Christ did not come to make us, to, uh, to, to set us free that we might be in bondage again. The Bible says, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. And I'm talking about joy, the joy of the Lord. The joy that God has given to you will make you strong. So even in times of troubles, in times of heartache, in times of huddle, that joy of the Lord, Jesus on you, no one can take it away from you. And you shouldn't even let the world take it away from you. I had one growing up, there was a song I always liked, and the song simply said, the joy that I have, the world did not give me, and the world cannot take it away from me. Jesus gave me the joy, and the world can't take it away from me. So sometimes I just randomly just belt out, the joy that I have, the world didn't give me. The world cannot take it away. Even when you're faced with challenges, as a representative of Christ, as kings and queens of the royal ambassadors of, the royal ambassadors of heaven, circumstances should not affect the joy that God has given to you. That's why we have been risen far above principalities, far above principalities and power and stronghold. Now, I'm not just talking about make, just laughing, doing all, uh, just ha laughing all the time and foolish gesture. Of course, there is the law of place. You need to understand. However, your presence as children of God should bring joy, should bring gladness, should not bring sorrow to people. I got so much points, but let's talk about just two or three points of joy killers. There are so many things that kill joy. You know, you've heard people say, oh, you're a joy kill. There are things that kill joy. There are things that hinder, that um, kill joy in people. And one of the things that make people not to be joyful is lack of control. And of course, if the, the pandemic was something that was uh, uh, really eye-opener to a lot of people. People, when people realized that they could not control their schedule, they could not have control over their traveling, there was a lot of uncertainty. People were not joyful. People were sad. Can I be honest? During the pandemic, I really wasn't bothered. I, I really wasn't bothered so much. The only thing I missed were hugs. And so sometimes I would just drive down to my friend's place. I'm like, boy, I'm coming to you. I just need a hug. And after that, I'm like, oh, just come over. We're going to eat together, get a hug, and bye. Pretty much that was what I missed. But of course, there were things that, certain things that you cannot control, you should not allow them affect the joy of the Lord in your, in your life. And these are some of the, this is one of the things that kills joy in people because they cannot control certain things. Number two, worrying. Worrying. A lot of people worry a lot. How can you be joyful when you are worried? I remember the, the story of um, uh, Martha and Mary when um, Jesus came into the house and Mary was, uh, Martha was doing a whole lot of stuff, cooking and everything and doing a whole lot. And Jesus told Martha, Martha, that careful about um, all, the, all these things you're worried about. Martha, that careful about um, all, the, all these things, you're worried about doing all of these things. But Mary, excuse me, Mary has found that which is needful, and that is what she's, she's taking hold of. And then I was just talking to someone, and I think the other day, the Holy Spirit, a couple of years ago, the Holy Spirit was telling me this. A lot of times, Christians get so caught up with doing the work of God, with working for God, that they miss God himself. Sometimes we want to work for God. The goal is to work with God. But a lot of times people want to work for God. Oh, I'm doing this for God. I'm doing that for God. And then sometimes when the blessing did not come the way they wanted, like, oh, they feel frustrated. And like dad would say, a lot of um, one of the greatest tragedies is it's a lot of unanswered prayers in the church today. And sometimes it's not that the prayers are not answered. It's Lack of knowledge. I don't even want to get started on that, but lack of knowledge. But again, when people worry a lot, the Bible says, take no thought of tomorrow. Uh, how much, uh, if the birds of the earth can be fed, if the lilies of the field can be clothed, 
how much more you, whom God made in his own image. I'm just going to say this one, um, this one thought. Broken focus. Broken focus is another thing that kills joy. Jesus Christ, who is our super role model, his focus was not broken. He knew what he was going to the cross to do. He knew that the cross was not the end of his life. So for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. We will have to continue this again because there's just so much more I, that the, the Holy Spirit is, is laying in my heart to do. But for time's sake, we'll have to continue this. I want to remind us again, School of the Spirit is coming up. You want to go to psom.org. You want to register for School of the Spirit because it's, the theme is One Spirit. It's an amazing time to be in God's presence and it's from October 21st to the 24th. Please go to psom.org and register. And of course, Power School is coming up in January. Look out for the, the flyers and the, the announcement for that. At this time, we want to encourage you. Um, feel comfortable. We want to encourage you to sow into the kingdom. For some people, they may not be out in the field doing the missionary work, but your money can go, can reach there. While other people are out in the field, we are, some of us are putting out the resources there to help the gospel spread. We have a big world to reach, like Dad would always say. We have a big world to reach, so we're not here playing church. So we want to encourage you to sow whatever, whichever forms you want to sow. You can go to Christlove.org and click on the donate button, and it will bring you straight through to um, PayPal, and you can sow there. Or you can just go, um, if you have the PayPal app, you can um, just, it's www.paypal.me forward slash Charles and Defon. You can cast your seed there. So for those who have the app, you just want to do that directly. That is the, the, the link. And we have the cash app option. It is the dollar sign Charles and Defon for the cash app option to sow. And we have the Venmo option. It is at Dr. Charles dash and Defon. You want to just, um, you can sow there through the uh, Venmo option. Or you want to do a uh, check and money order. You can put the money order to um, at Christ Love Media. And the P.O. Box is 72800 Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Everything is all up there on the screen. So you can just um, go through it again. If I was too fast, you can go through it again. Remember, the, the, I just want to leave this with you. The joy of the Lord is a gift. Joy is an attitude of the heart. You cannot let anyone steal that joy from you. You need to preserve that joy. And if you lack being joyful, you want to stir up that gift of God that is in you because the world out there is hurting and they need joyful people to tell them how. Because you cannot go to the world and teach the gospel. Being sad, you need to, you need to express what you're teaching. I just want to thank you guys for um, listening. And again, I just want to appreciate my dad, Dr. Charles and Defon, and mom, Mama Donna and Defon, they have poured so much into me, and I just want to appreciate them for this great privilege and honor to serve and to bring the world to you guys. And most importantly, I just want to give God all the glory, and I thank you, the audience, for, for watching and for listening. Do have a wonderful day, and um, God bless you. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.